I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Dedicated to the only serious choice, the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the music, and the spoken word. You're watching Life Source Victory Television live with me, your host, Pastor Jay Stan McCauley, inviting you to sit back and relax for the next eight minutes as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. Now, my friends, of course, obviously we're not on our normal, like, network set. I'm in my office today, okay? Yeah, you know, most of the programs that we do here are actually emanate from my office. So I'm in my office today because I am, I am buried. I am, I am, I am like buried beyond buried in terms of projects and I'm backed up. And, uh, but you know what? I could at the very least take time out of that busy schedule for Bible study, all right? So that's what I'm doing. So that's why we're not on our normal, uh, regular set because uh, I, I got to keep it rolling. Jump up from the desk and come over here because I'm, I'm 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 in production and I'm editing, and so uh, let's get started with the eight minute Bible study. Okay, want to remind you by the way that if you want to get caught up on the eight minute Bible study, just go to accesstv.org, channel ten. All right. Yesterday we left off talking about the result of error, reading on the second Timothy chapter, two verses uh, seventeen and eighteen. We're going to pick it up at verse nineteen. Nevertheless. The foundation of God stand sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His, is the result of truth. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. All right. Verse 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified and meet, M-E-E-T, which is the old English word for fit, and uh, fit, meet, for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. All right, so the result of error, leads to destruction, uh, as we find in verse 17 and 18, uh, because uh, faith is overthrown, because of uh, the error of, of some, the error of uh, two, all right? Uh, and the result of, of, of truth is that faith increases, uh, and, and people make themselves vessels that can be utilized uh, for God's glory even more. Now, this is important. Why? Because your error affects more people than you may realize. All right, it's not just you that may be in error, but others that look to you for leadership, for examples, frames of reference. You know, a lot of times the church makes the mistake of thinking that it needs to acquiesce to the world's view of life in order to win the world. Quite the contrary. The world is looking to you as the reference, as the litmus, so that they can see just how far they need to adjust to get to the truth. So if you compromise the truth of the gospel, in an effort to reach those that are lost, well, guess what? They'll just stay lost because you'll be lost with them. But if you continue down the path of righteousness, continue down the path of truth, well, when they see you, they see where truth is. And then when they join you, they are where truth is. Okay. And then they become vessels of honor as opposed to vessels of dishonor. Now you can grow in Christ. More exactly, you will grow in Christ. When the Bible says, by grace are you saved, not of faith, lest any man should boast. So it's nothing that you did, but once you come into the relationship with Jesus Christ, once you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the rules change. You're no longer in the world. You're, you're, excuse me, you're no longer of the world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. And so the rules of the world don't apply to you anymore. The rules of the gospel, the rules of the blood of the lamb apply to you. And to whom much is given, much is required. So much is required of you. All right. And part of that requirement is that you would make the personal sacrifice not to be a stumbling block to others, whereby their faith is overthrown by the error of your ways. 
Okay, now you're saved by grace, but what does that mean? That we should continue in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid, of course not. But you come to a place where your, your wrongdoing should be of such heavy conviction that you discontinue uh, doing it. Verse 22, flee also youthful lusts. You know, things you did when you was young and dumb like dressing up in a uh, samurai outfit with a mask and walking across the campus of uh, Central Connecticut State University uh, coming back from a, a Halloween party. Uh, these are things you ought not do on college campus in this day and age because, you know, you could be surrounded by SWAT teams and helicopters. That young man is lucky they, they didn't just shoot him. All right, so <laughs> you got to be careful, my friends. The things you do in your youth when you, when you don't have a whole lot of sense all right, flee youthful desires or lusts, but follow what? Righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of what? A pure heart, all right? Who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Yes, we have appetites, passions, wants, and desires, but at some point, the appetites, the passions, the wants, and desires become second to also which should be an overriding want and desire to do the will of the Lord. All right, so to do His will should should be more um, present than to do the to do than doing your own will. Okay, verse uh, twenty-three. Uh, well, let's read verse twenty-two and uh, down uh, to twenty-four, and that should take us to the end of our eight-minute Bible study for today. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the name or call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preventure will give them repentance to do uh, excuse me, to, to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. All right. So apt to teach those of you who've called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be your personal Lord and Savior who are saved, sanctified and all those other things. You have a responsibility. You're called. All right. And that means you have a ministry. And part of that ministry is being uh, one who has been given the charge of taking forth the gospel message to the lost out there. All right. So uh, rise to the occasion. Hopefully we can help you do it. All right. If you've been touched and if you've been blessed by the ministry here today, share with family and friends and tune in each and every day as we endeavor to be here. We'll be back here tomorrow. Doesn't matter how busy we are. We'll make time out of our day, whether we're here or on our normal uh, set. Uh, in, uh, in, in our main studio. God bless you all. Keep you strong in the faith. See you real soon. Thank you.